Hey guys, Brightwick here uh, with EXP Realty. Super excited for you to be here with this new episode um, on the YouTube channel. Um, guys, I have a very special friend and special guest with me today. We're going to talk about um, just more, the mortgage industry, what's happening with rates, what's happening with uh, real estate world right now. And this is my really, really good friend, Trey Strickland with Movement Bank. And uh, so what's up, Trey? Hey, guys. i uh, honored to be here uh, with you. And uh, like I said, I was telling Brian earlier, I had to do this on my phone. My audio on my computer went out uh, for some reason earlier. So anyway, forgive the the lighting and kind of the angle here, but we'll, we'll work through it. Um, so yeah, just a very quick introduction. I've been doing this for... Uh, be six years next month. Um, you've been, uh, you know, privileged to kind of see already in that short time frame a lot of ups and downs and things that you know oftentimes aren't seen, but maybe once in a generation, as I'm sure a lot of you are kind of living through that right now too. As Brian mentioned, I am with Movement Bank. We're a sister company of Movement Mortgage. We have the same underwriters and sort of, uh, uh, you know, um, the 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 higher up, so to speak, are are still all in all in one the same, but. What we're able to do is we're able to actually broker out loans through about half a dozen other um, lending channels, whereas, you know, your traditional movement mortgage person cannot. We also have some in-house bank, you know, specific products as well, doctor's loans, um, new construction, those kind of things as well. OK, so just wanted to, again, provide a quick background. I know Brian's got several questions he wants to walk through here. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. Let's let's go. All right, so I'm gonna tell I'm gonna give you this phrase here and tell me if you think it's true or false and why. Okay, so okay. Housing, housing prices have corrected but not crashed. Uh, I would say mostly true. Okay. Um, they right. definitely have not crashed. I would say, you know, you ask ten different people, you get ten different answers on the yeah. on the corrected front you know and and it's regional you know i think um obviously if you're looking in in san francisco at what what's going on with their housing market it has dropped you know home prices have dropped there um but on a national average home prices have not dropped and definitely in the carolinas uh we're still seeing an appreciation i think the last time i read something was about five to six percent um you know annually year over year so if you're in a four hundred thousand dollar home um, in just one year, you know, if you bought it today for 400,000 on July 31st, 2023, by that math, it would be worth 420 next year. So, you know, it's still, it's still regional, still local. Um, but it's definitely not crashed. It, 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 uh, it's still appreciating in most markets for sure. Yeah, for sure. So you kind of already elaborated on it, but what are you seeing right now in Charlotte? Yeah, Charlotte's still hot. Um, you know, Raleigh, Durham, still, still hot. Really, all of the Carolinas is still, still a great market. Charleston, Greenville, Spartanburg, um, all of those areas are are great. Definitely not seeing a slowdown, uh, just in terms of pricing. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, I mean, I I think we're all in the same boat that that uh, whenever we have those clients that come and say, well, hey, Trey, I'm waiting on on prices to fall, and they're looking in in uh, you know anywhere and really anywhere in the Carolinas, but definitely within some of the major to mid cities, I, I just, you know, politely say, Hey, you know, that, that doesn't appear that's going to happen. Yeah. I haven't had, I, so far it, this year, I have not got anything under contract under asking price. It has been, you know, at least four or 5,000 over on every single deal that I've either listed or sold with. So definitely not going under or going down quite yet. Um, so in my experience, usually inventory, when inventory is low, interest rates are a little lower and when it's higher, it's higher. Why do you think it's kind of the opposite right now? It's kind of like interest rates are a little higher, but inventory is a little lower. So it's kind of a weird, we're in a weird season right now. Why do you think that is? Yeah. Well, I mean, there's so many factors I could spend and, you know, an hour on this. So I'll, I'll try to keep it to just a minute or two. Yeah. Um, back in 2008, with the housing crash, you know, first started, you had a lot of these smaller builders get out of, of the industry completely. Um, at the same time that that ha has happened over the last decade, you've had outside of the baby boomer generation, um, the millennial generation, just based off of a population standpoint, is, again, outside of, of the baby boomers that were born in the 40s and 50s, the biggest population to enter into the housing market within the last 10 years. So you've got a, a decrease in the amount of homes available. 
because of of uh, the builders that got out of the industry, you know, 15 years ago or so. And then at the same time that that's happening, you've got a, a massive influx of younger buyers hitting the market. You pair that with historically low interest rates to combat, um, you know, the economic of he- upheaval of coronavirus, of COVID, where you've got these low interest rates where people don't want to give those up and, and, and move out. Um, and so we've just kind of created a, a, you know, an environment where we're chronically low on, on homes, where at the same time, inflationary response by our federal government, the Federal Reserve, is to basically what they want to try to do is break the labor market. Now, they may use different verbiage when they're talking about that, but that's really what they're looking for when when they're trying to slow down inflation. One of the the only tools that they have to do that, they'll say that they, they've got an array of tools, but their, their, their biggest blunt in the instrument is to break the labor market via higher interest rates to make it more difficult to, for people to borrow money and uh, specifically small businesses and therefore in turn lay off people. Now, uh, we haven't seen that labor market break yet and so that's some of the verbiage that we hear around uh, is there going to be a soft landing are we not going to actually have to go into a recession to correct this and you know that kind of varies by the day depending on what job support you're looking at and those kind of things but um but yeah i mean that's why we have chronically low housing available and at the same time we have these higher interest rates because it's a, a perfect storm of environments uh, over the last few years. And right now for the last 12 months, the federal reserve trying to tame inflation. For sure. Yeah. Dude, that was, uh, that was a great answer. I feel like I learned something right then there. That was awesome. Thanks. Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> okay. So we're going to do some predictions. Okay? okay. So again, AKA all the viewers and anybody listening, these are predictions. So don't hold trade. <laughs> accountable everybody it's kind of like you know trey mentioned a minute ago you know there are ask 10 different people you're going to have 10 different answers so you know these are just predictions uh, so i just want to ask you these for you trey all right sure where do you see interest rates going by the end of 2023 by the end of 2023 i think and and I'll put it out there so you can kind of tell your clients. I yeah. think that if we are at, if your client right now, let's just say they're an FHA client okay. and they're getting quoted a 6.5, I think by Christmas, they will be at maybe a 5.875 to a six. Okay. So three quarters of a point lower. I think by the first quarter of 2024, I was going to ask you uh, we will, to yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll probably see, um, uh, you know, it drop even further to maybe okay. where we're like a whole point away from where we are now. Okay. And then I also think at some point next year, Reserve Chair just said this last week when they had their own meeting. So this this isn't even so much a prediction. It's just, you know, holding them true to their word, which is there there will be a rate cut at least one at some point in 2024, if not two. So if that happens, you you know, you could be, we could be back into the fours or low fives by end of year next year. But even by Christmas time this year, I think you're going to see a quarter to a half a point drop um, before we get to the, to New Year's Eve. Yeah. Okay. So actually side note question, this is not on my, questions that this is just something popping in my mind so and this conf- this is kind of confusing to some people when you when they say we're going to drop a point or is that a whole percent what is that point equal to rate i guess conversion does that make sense like what is a point is it literally from five to six yeah yeah so um and, and it, it, yeah it kind of does if i'm not answering your question then feel free to kind of uh okay. you know re- rearrange it but yeah when i'm saying it's going to drop a point i am talking about it going from 6.5 to 5.5 or okay. if i'm okay. saying three quarters of a point now you know that's a different verbiage when the lender tells you of course you're paying a point for a rate now that's just mortgage lingo for one percent of your loan amount. So, um, you know, if your loan amount is 350,000 
and your interest rate is at 6.5% R rate, meaning you're, yeah. you're not paying much to get that. And you want a lower rate then the lender may say, well, Hey, you know, if you pay one point, one percent so that would be in that situation would be thirty five hundred dollars you could get to you know a six percent um that's how that works but yeah when i say it's going to be a, a, a point lower I, I just mean actually okay. a point actually a point gotcha all right next one so housing prices do you think it's going to go up or do you think it's going to go down and based on your answer what by what percent do you think yeah, we, I mean, we touched base slightly on this earlier, but, you, you know, I don't see, again, I do think some housing markets, um, San Francisco is a big one, Portland, um, you're already seeing some negative trends in and around Austin, Texas. Um, so there are some areas where, you know, I think it's it's possible if it already isn't happening where home prices are, um, you know, decreasing, depreciating, so to speak. Uh, but but nationally, I don't see that happening at all. Um, again, I, the l last I looked, it was five or six percent nationally appreciating this year. And again, in the Carolinas, it, it may end up being even more. So yeah. so I just don't see that happening both on a national scale and in, in our market either. I mean, again, there's some niche areas of the country where you could see it. But as a whole, it not not going to happen. Yeah. Cool, man. So another question, it's not a prediction, it's a question. So when someone's applying for a loan, and you know, there's so many different kinds like FHA, VA, conventional, uh, you know, USDA, what can you just give us because again, this could be like an hour of conversation right here. But what are the basics of the differences in loans and like, why someone would get this loan over that loan? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we'll just kind of touch base with the the four yeah. major Fannie Freddie products, okay? Yeah. So, you've got your conventional loan, you've got your USDA loan, so United States Department of Agriculture, which has to be in a rural area and is 100% financed. You've got your Federal Housing Authority loan, aka FHA loan, and then you've got your VA loan for, for veterans. Um, so, just a real, you know, quick breakdown. I would say if you're a veteran, you know, try to use that VA entitlement, you know, you're entitled to that program. Um, great benefits of that program. It is hundred percent financed. You can always put more money down if you would like, but you don't have to, as long as you qualify from a debt standpoint. Um, there's also no private mortgage insurance with that loan. So it's a great product to have also, and this is a question that pops up with my veterans all the time is Trey, am I allowed to have, a second home or an investment property with a VA loan. Mm -hmm. The technical answer to that question is no, you're not. You would have to claim it as a primary. However, you can hold two VA loans simultaneously as long as you have enough entitlement. And entitlement is based off of amount of years in service and some other things like that. But basically, if you bought a home, let's just say you had $600,000 in, in entitlement and you bought one home at, you know, $300,000 and, uh, Two or three years later, you wanted to buy, uh, uh, you know, another home down in, in the Myrtle Beach area. As long as your entitlement covered that, you you could, you know, claim that that was going to be your new primary and do that. So that would be big benefits to VA. Okay. Um, again, uh, I don't know if you want to do cons or just pros. We could do both. <laughs> but uh, just kind of just do pros. A understanding. <laughs> yeah. Let's just yeah. Do pros. Yeah. Um, so that's the, the one with VA FHA that those that's going to be, you know, there, there's really been a, an inverted relationship the last you know year or so where FHA um, typically would have a higher interest rate than a conventional loan, but it, a totally separate conversation in and of itself would be as to why that has, has uh, you know, reversed itself. But FHA, in my opinion, if you're going to be below the 472,000, dollar threshold which is the maximum loan amount right now for fha in the carolinas changes every year and it does change based off where you are but if you're going to be under that um, as long as the seller will accept your fha offer i think that's the way to go right now rates are lower with fha it allows you to have more debt at 56.9 percent so almost 57 yeah. percent your credit scores don't have to be as good 
Um, PMI still may be slightly higher than conventional, but with that interest rate differential, it'll make up for, for any difference there. So I'm advising clients right now that traditionally would have gone conventional. I'm just telling them, hey, look, I'm going to send out two offers on your behalf, one conventional, one FHA. If you need to go conventional for whatever reason, go for it. But if, they, if the sellers will take an FHA, that's the way you need to go. So currently, that's kind of where I stand with that. Um, USDA is a great program. Again, United States Department of Agriculture, but that property address has to be uh, listed in a designated rural area. So, you know, of course, the client can't just say, well, it feels, you know, country yeah. enough to me. It, it has to be, you know, on the actual uh, the actual list there. And as a consumer, you can pull that up. It's like you literally just type in United States Department of Agriculture and put the, the property address in. Most counties uh, in North Carolina are uh, of course, some of the bigger cities and, and counties are not. But in, anyway, that's a great product as well. Also, 100 percent finance. But it, it is pretty niche. It's one of those programs that I have a lot of people that, you know, on its surface, they would love to try and get in it. Um, but when you actually break it down, it doesn't fit that many people really for two main reasons. Okay. One is the debt to income ratio is capped at 41%. You can go up to like 43, 45 with good credit, but typically as a general rule, it's 41. So a lot of people just have more debt uh, than, than what's required. The second one is there's an income requirement. So for a family of five or less, if you're making um, more than $103,000 a year, uh, then, then that's a no-go. So uh, again, it is a great program for some people, but just so many people don't qualify for it. And then last but not least, old faithful conventional loan, you know, it's still, still plugging in. Um, I mean, that's still the way to go. I think specifically if you're going to be putting 20% down or more still kind of a no brainer, obviously if the property you're buying uh, may possibly need some repairs or something like that, a conventional appraisal is going to be more advantageous to you. And those are really uh, catered towards buyers with credit scores of 680 or higher, that's kind of the, the bare floor minimum. And right. I would really advise 720 or higher because in between that 680 and 720 range, that's kind of where you'd want to have a conversation again as a lender of, hey, you know, maybe let's look at FHA um, in, instead. But uh, but yeah, those are the main four and uh, hopefully that kind of covers it. That's awesome, man. Yeah, thank you. So if someone's looking to, you know, start the process of looking to buy a house, and uh, here in the Charlotte area, Mooresville, Lake Norman area, where we are, obviously they're going to work with me, right, guys? And uh, so, uh, but how how can we get in touch with you? How can they get in touch with you um, and stay in contact with you to start that process? Yeah, uh, great question. Um, so you can just literally type in my name, Trace Strickland at Movement Bank. My um, website will pull up. You can just scroll down and click apply online. That'll get started for you. I could uh, send you a text also to apply online um, that I have, you know, already created, or I'm kind of, you know, an old school guy. I, I do like to do things over the phone. Um, some of my clients appreciate that. Some would just prefer to do it over, over, uh, you know, online. I'm cool either way. My whole stick about, you know, I guess preferring to do it over the phone. It's just, you know, you get a gauge for, um, exactly what somebody's looking for. You get to make that rapport. And then whenever you have an online application, you're, you're calling up those folks anyway, once you get it in and you're kind of rehashing what they've already put in. Um, so, you know, I think that's uh, probably the way I would prefer, but again, that's the way. So just a direct uh, text call or online. I mean, that's all three work for me. Awesome, dude. Thank you so much for just hanging out today. And dude, you gave us some great information. And so, Guys, if you have any questions for Trey, you can either reach out to him like that or just leave a comment and then I'll translate that for you. But uh, guys, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, if you have any questions for me, I'm here for it. So you guys have a great day and see you later. Thanks. Man.